Hi class, this is Dr. New Storms up early in the morning on November the 28th. We, we've been trying to send this to you for days, but unfortunately my uh, camera was too filled with little videos to continue working, so I had to, to do some editing. Um, there are a couple reactions that I'm holding you responsible for, and I don't usually do this. However, we did do our reactions very slowly in class, and you really do have to learn to learn some reactions on your own. You really do, or we're not going to make it through the course. Um, so, what I'm recommending is that you read the sections on catalytic hydrogenation, watch the little movie I sent you on catalytic hydrogenation, and uh, read the section on hydrobromination in the presence of peroxides in your textbook. Um, so, as far as catalytic hydrogenation goes, what it involves, and I forget which number this is, this is number seven or number eight in the reactions, possibly seven. You guys will be on top of that. Um, you have some kind of double bond. You add hydrogen gas to it in the presence of palladium on carbon. This is palladium deposited on carbon. And in doing so, you will add hydrogens normally sin. It's normally a sin addition. And I'll remind you, how many sin additions are there? There's only two. Sin, sin. In some cases it doesn't even matter, but the point is these H's come in on the same side. This is not a reaction that you will have to write a mechanism, although you will have to write many mechanisms. I'm a mechanistic kind of teacher, and this is a mechanistic kind of course, but I don't ask you mechanisms where the mechanisms involve metals very frequently because I wouldn't say that generally, universally. I'm just saying in a lot of addition reactions involving metals, there are parts of it that are a little sketchy. So um, you don't have to know oxymercuration, demercuration. You don't have to know... Uh, the addition of diborane, which is a rather complica complicated mechanism, followed by oxidation. And you don't need to know the mechanism of this reaction, although I think you should watch the movie, and I'm going to describe it briefly here. Okay, so again, this is normally a syn addition, which is of some use to you in terms of stereochemistry. So for example, if you had this molecule, And I'm putting a marker on it just to make the two faces different. And you added uh, H2 in the presence of palladium on, cattle, uh, on carbon. This means the metal, palladium, that you read about, the transition metal, has been deposited on carbon particles. And it actually just looks like a black dust, sort of like um, carbon. It doesn't really look very different. It's like charcoal. And you would do this in some kind of solvent, for example, ethanol. That would be a typical solvent. You have to get something to get this reagent into solution. And then what you would obtain out of this, you're going to start seeing a repeating theme. Oh, it doesn't make a difference in this case. Uh oh, I'm going to change it a little bit. So let's say I put two methyls on here. I want, it, I want it to have a little stereochemistry. I have two methyls. When the two H's come in sin, they're going to push the two methyls down. So I added these methyls. And then the other product would look like this. Notice this is a pre-existing stereocenter and if, it, if the agents came in from the bottom face what would you say? Okay, so these are diastereomers. Okay, why are they diastereomers? Because this center is an asymmetric carbon. It is S. It is still S here. It is still S here. And you made two new asymmetric centers. So that means the relationship between these two is such that they are diastereomers. They are not formed in equal quantity. And you are not expected to predict which one will be dominant. Is it still working? Mm -hmm. What's the time? Almost five minutes. Okay, so to give you a little background on this, Okay, very quick, and it's going to be the worst drawing drawn ever because it's early in the morning. But the way you do these reactions is you do them in a little reactor. 
The reactor can be, I've seen people do this, a very thickly walled bottle, okay, in which you put some kind of a adapter. And that adapter is hooked into a helium tank. Okay, so you have like tanks, not helium, I'm sorry, we're doing a hydrogenation, hydrogen tank. So right, like in our lab, what I was thinking about in our lab, you know how we have those helium tanks? It's that kind of a tank, it's hooked over here and there's a regulator on it and you can control the, helium, the hydrogen that's going in. So there's hydrogen pressure being put on the solution. Now on the bottom you might have your ethanol, that's an abbreviation for ethanol. You might have your alkene, you'd have different amounts of your alkene. You'd have hydrogen dissolved in here. And on the bottom, you'd have the catalyst. Notice the reaction has some problems with phases. Okay? You're putting hydrogen in at high pressure. The alkene is dissolved in the ethanol. Some of the hydrogen's in the ethanol. And then the catalyst is like a little pile of solid. The catalyst is solid particles. Not dissolved. So in class, you know, we talked a little bit about catalysis, and we said, someone in the class said one day, the catalyst uh, creates a surface for the reaction to take place on. And this is truly what this does. This is a true example of catalysis. So if this was um, one catalytic particle, Okay, here's our particle. Okay, this is just, this is palladium on carbon, and I'm just giving it an amorphous shape. What happens is that the alkene, which is dissolved in the solvent, gets absorbed onto that surface, and then the hydrogen is absorbed onto the surface. And again, that movie I showed you really demonstrates what happens. And then what happens is that the hydrogen, the, the alkene actually bonds on and has this opening, and then the hydrogens individually get bonded to the catalyst. And then one by one, the hydrogens get um, added to the um, alkene. I keep saying the catalyst, to the alkene. So if I'm redrawing my amorphous solid, this is supposed to be the same amorphous solid. I was afraid to redraw it because I thought it was going to look different. You then have an H, and then this would be this would be also, you know, there are H's bonded all over this thing. This, this H would be delivered from the other side, and this, this would come off. Okay, so basically, we don't know the exact arrows. I'm writing, writing kind of crazy arrows there, but the basic idea is first this, and this get absorbed onto the catalyst. After being absorbed onto the catalyst, the bonds are broken and the hydrogens are delivered one by one from the opposite face. And again, I recommend you watch the movie. There are other catalysts. There are many other catalysts. There can be platinum, palladium, catalyst, nickel catalyst. And the one that I gave you to watch, I may re-show that on Monday just to make sure everybody's on board, but that's the rhodium catalyst, okay? Now, one other thing I wanted to say about this, how much time do I have left? Almost nine minutes. Nine minutes, okay. Well, one thing um, you should think about a little bit is that when you have fats, so I'm going to say very quickly, if you have a fat, it, this is a very small structured fat. A fat has a structure roughly like this. I'll just put R here, CO2. R prime here. Oops. I don't want that. I want an O here and an H here. We can talk fats, about fats one day. Again, but what I want you to think about, um, these are R groups, and these R groups can be like this group. One of the things we pride ourselves on is, is, a, is ingesting polyunsaturated fats. A polyunsaturated fat is a fat that has a double bond. But unfortunately, when you read on the side of boxes, it'll say partially hydrogenated um, What's a good oil? Uh, vegetable oil, or that's not so good. Parcel, partially hydrogenated oil, olive oil or something like that. Almost, too. Yeah. And, um, all right, well, I'll finish that in class.